Hello there and welcome to another edition of Ask David. All the way through lockdown I've been tackling some of the most pernicious weeds in my garden, one of which is the bindweed. As soon as I've seen it I've tried to dig out all the white roots uh, and chopped all the top growth off it as much as I can every time I've seen it. And that persistence seems to be paying off because the stems, the new stems that are regrowing are getting ever weaker and I think as long as I stay at home during this semi-lockdown phase and keep on top of that bindweed then that will be one of the best things that could come out of this year. So meanwhile, let's go on and answer some of the questions that you've sent in to me for this week's Ask David. So first out of the email post bag is a message from Anne. She says that she's got some cauliflowers that really have got quite ugly sort of brownish black curds that have developed as the cauliflowers have matured really. Um, she sent in a picture and really it does look particularly gruesome Anne. Um, I think this has come about because we had some hot dry weather a couple of months ago while the plants were developing and I think that's probably stressed them slightly. Also the curds have gone from being developing during very warm hot conditions to suddenly being faced with coping with rain really. We've had a reasonable amount of rain and I think that on the stressed curds has probably caused this discoloration uh, and the way that you can avoid this is to cover the curds with the leaves of the cauliflower so crack the leaves and bend them over the developing curds and that should keep them in good condition in the future but I think really the only thing you can do with these is to cut out the curd uh, and perhaps consign it to the compost heap try and use some of the green leaves surrounding the cauliflower as sort of spring greens really I know it's a bit late but that's probably what you could use use the foliage for and make a cross in the top of the cut stem to see whether you get any regrowth that might give you some mini cauliflowers to enjoy. Denise has got a winter flowering viburnum and she wants to know if she can cut it hard back at this time of year because she says she wants to encourage some strong new growth from the base of the plant because it's quite bare at the base uh, and it's quite tall and leggy. Denise, I would be a bit cautious about cutting it hard back at this time of year. In midsummer, your viburnum may well just give up the ghost. It's something that I do recommend, rejuvenation, cutting plants hard back, probably in around March or April time. And then just as the plant is starting into growth, it should respond by making good, vigorous new growth that you can train into a shapely plant. But at this time of year, as I say, I'd be inclined to be cautious and perhaps just cut out two or three of the thickest, oldest stems as low down on the plant as possible and see whether you do get any regrowth. Leave the rest of the growth in place as a bit of a guarantee to keep the plant alive in the meantime. And if you don't get any of those shoots from the base that you're looking for, then I'd chop it right down almost to ground level next spring, just as it's starting into growth. Now Lindsay wants to plant up some large planters with ericaceous plants and she's filled them with ericaceous compost. But she's asking, is it okay to grow non-ericaceous plants in that ericaceous compost or can she not mix the two together, the ericaceous plants and the non-ericaceous plants? Well Lindsay, because you filled your planters with ericaceous compost, that means an acid growing medium, it means that you can grow acid loving plants and thankfully you can also grow um, non-acid loving plants as well. Things that prefer perhaps a more neutral pH or things that like an alkaline soil. So you're okay with your um, acidic growing conditions to grow a whole mixture of different plants in those planters. However, if it was the reverse and you had a limey growing medium, you would only be able to grow lime loving plants in that growing medium. You wouldn't be able to grow the acid lovers. So in your case, the sky's the limit and plant what you like in your ericaceous compost. Meantime, Helen wants to know what's going on with her brown turkey fig. She says she's got it growing in what really she describes as a small tin dustbin. Uh, and she says she's had it for about 10 years and it's done really well. 
This year it's got some figs on it but the foliage is very very small and stunted and also there are some sort of silvery marks on the stems of the plant as well. Well I think here Lindsay you've been particularly lucky with this fig in this tin container. I wouldn't recommend growing any plant in a metal container because if you have conditions like we had a couple of months ago with very hot sunshine I think you'll find that the roots of the plant in your case have actually fried uh, because the metal has heated up uh, and the poor plant has really suffered. So I'd be inclined to knock the plant from its pot, soak it thoroughly first so that it comes out easily uh, and then replace that tin dustbin with say something like a half barrel filled at the base with lots of broken up flower pots and old stones and gravel fill half of the base of the plant up like that and then top it off with a mixture 50 50 of soil or bag loam uh, mix that together with a multi-purpose compost as i say quantities are about 50 50 soil or loam with multi-purpose compost uh, and replant your plant in that and I think it will fly away uh, and it will settle down and it won't suffer in the way that it has done this year. And the last question this week comes from Christine. She says that she's really badly troubled with vine weevil in her ericaceous beds that are filled with ericaceous compost. She says that it's mainly ericaceous plants that are suffering from the vine weevil damage. And this is typified by little notches on the leaves of things like rhododendrons. They get really badly notched by vine weevil. The adult weevils come up and, and chew at the leaves in this way. So what I'd be inclined to do is carry on with the vine weevil nematode treatment that you've been using already. She mentions this in her email that she's made one application. Uh, doesn't really seem to have made much difference. I think Christine you need to be patient because now the conditions are really good in the garden. The soil and the temperatures are quite warm. Those nematodes will really start to multiply up and they will hunt down all the vine weevils and their grubs uh, and feast on them and bump them off hopefully. But if you don't feel that it's working then it's definitely a good idea to make a second application. Uh, use the instructions on the packet, make sure that the soil is at the right temperature uh, and then make a second application and I think you'll find that that will really clobber these beasties. In the meantime one good idea is to go out first thing in the morning and last thing at night and try and catch the adult weevils as they're crawling over the surface of the leaves, pick them off by hand uh, and then dispatch them in whatever way you feel appropriate. Uh, you can also try and tackle the grubs which are underground chewing on the roots and, and you can do this by absolutely flooding the compost that the plants are growing in, flood the compost with plenty of water, really really soak it thoroughly and you may well find that the grubs come up to the surface to get air uh, and then you can either collect them and dispatch of those as in a similar way to the adults or you can leave them for the birds to find uh, and they'll make a, a really tasty meal out of them. So that would be my advice Christine, just be patient in the meantime and those nematodes should work. So there you go, this week's crop of questions answered. I'm gonna go away now and tackle my next worst weed, which is ground elder. Wish me luck. <laughs>